All right, guys, so we're on part two, chapter one. I, I showed you this photo at the end of the last chapter of part one. And now we're on part two, chapter one. Very short. There is no uh, heading. It's just the beginning of part two. Chapter one, excuse me. About 20 miles east of Baker, I stopped to check the drug bag. The sun was hot and I felt like killing something. Anything, even a big lizard, drill the fucker. I got my attorney's 357 Magnum out of the trunk and spun the cylinder. It was loaded all the way around, long, nasty little slugs, 158 grains with a fine flat trajectory and painted Aztec gold on the tips. I blew the horn a few times, hoping to call up an iguana. Get the buggers moving. They were out there, I knew, in that goddamn sea of cactus, hunkered down, barely breathing. And every one of the stinking little bastards was loaded with deadly poison. Three fast explosions knocked me off balance. Three deafening double action blasts from the 357 in my right hand. Jesus, firing at nothing for no reason at all. Bad craziness. I tossed the gun into the front seat of the shark and stared nervously at the highway. No cars either way, the road was empty for two or three miles in both directions. Fine luck. It would not to do it would not do to be found in the desert under these circumstances, firing wildly into the cactus from a car full of drugs, and especially not now on the lamb from the highway patrol. Awkward questions would arise. Well now, mister Ah, Duke, you understand, of course, that it is illegal to discharge a firearm of any kind while standing on a federal highway. What? Even in self-defense, this goddamn gun has a hair trigger, officer. The truth is I only meant to fire once, just to scare the little bastards. A heavy stare, then speaking very slowly. Are you saying, Mr. Duke, that you were attacked out here? Well, no, not literally attacked, officer, but seriously menaced. I stopped to piss, and the minute I stepped out of the car, these filthy little bags of poison were all around me. They moved like greased lightning. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Will this story hold up? No, they will place me under arrest and routinely search the car, and when that happened, all kinds of savage howl would break loose. They would never believe all these drugs were necessary f to my work. That in truth, I was a professional journalist on my way to Las Vegas to cover the National District Attorney's Conference on Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs. Just samples, officer. I got the stuff off a road man for the Neo-American Church back in Barstow. Back in Barstow, we started acting funny, so I worked them over. Will they buy this? No, they will lock me in some hellhole of a jail and beat me on the kidneys with big branches, causing me to piss blood for years to come. Luckily, nobody bothered me while I ran a quick inventory on the kit bag. The stash was a hopeless mess, all churned together and half crushed. Some of the mescaline pellets had disintegrated into a reddish-brown powder, but I counted about 35 or 40 still intact. My attorney had eaten all the reds, but there was quite a bit of speed left. No more grass, the coke bottle was empty, one acid blotter, a nice brown lump of opium, hash, and six loose amils. Not enough for anything serious, just a, but a careful rationing of the mescaline would probably get us through the four-day drug conference. On the outskirts of Vegas, I stopped at a neighborhood pharmacy and bought two quarts of gold tequila, two-fifths of Chivas Regal, and a pint of ether. I was tempted to ask for some amils. My angina pectoris was starting to act up but the druggist had the eyes of a mean Baptist hysteric. I told him I needed the ether to get the tape off my legs, but by that time he'd already rung the stuff up and bagged it. He didn't give a fuck about ether. I wonder what he would say if I asked him for $22 worth of Romilar and a tank of nitrous oxide. Probably he would have sold it to me. Why not? Free enterprise. Give the public what it needs, especially this bad, sweaty, nervous-talking fella with tape all over his legs and this terrible cough, along with angina pectoris and these god-awful aneuristic flashes every time he gets in the sun. I mean, this fella was in bad shape, officer. How the hell was I to know he'd walk straight out to his car and start abusing those drugs? How indeed. I lingered a moment at the magazine rack. Then got a grip on myself and hurried outside to the car. The idea of going completely crazy on laughing gas in the middle of the DA's drug conference had a definite warped appeal. But not on the first day, I thought. Save that for later. No point getting busted and committed before the conference even starts. I stole the review journal from a rack in the parking lot, but I threw it away after reading the story on page one. 
surgery uncertain after eyes removed. Baltimore UPI doctor said Friday they were uncertain whether surgery would succeed in restoring the eyesight of a young man and pulled out his eyes while suffering the effects of a drug overdose in a jail cell. Charles E. Ness, Jr., 25, underwent surgery late Thursday at Maryland General Hospital, but doctors said it may be weeks before they could determine the outcome. A statement issued by the hospital reported that Ines had no light perception in either eye prior to surgery and the possibility he will never have light perception is extremely poor. Ines, son of a prominent Massachusetts Republican, was found in a jail cell Thursday by a turnkey who said Ines had pulled out his eyeballs. Ines was arrested Wednesday night while waking nude or walking nude through a neighborhood near where he lived. He was examined at Mercy Hospital and then placed in a jail cell. Police and one of Ines's friends said he had taken an overdose of animal tranquilizer. Police reported the drug was PCP, a Park Davis product not sold for human medical purposes since 1963. However, a spokesman for Park Davis said he thought the drug might be available on the black market. Taken alone, the spokesman said PCP effects would not last more than 12 to 14 hours. However, the effects of PCP combined with an hallucinogen such as LSD were not known. Ines told a neighbor last Saturday, the day after he first took the drug, that his eyes were bothering him and that he could not read. Wednesday night, police said Ines seemed to be in a deeply depressed state and so impervious to pain that he did not scream when he pulled out his eyes. <laughs> oh, shit. Insane.